Receiver laps come wired for 110 volt unless you're overseas or you need 220 volt. Very easy, ready to go. The operation of the receiver lap is rather simple. Okay, there's an off-center shaft in being driven by the motor and a counterbalance weight. They're offset from each other. This one makes the machine oscillate. The weight gives it the jiggle. The pan will rotate on these bearings. The bearing keeper, already attached to the machine, into it goes a steel plate and two balls in each section. And a bit of oil. With the balls all set up, oiled, ready to go, the top plate goes on. This is the bottom of the reciprolap pan, the top plate. This is the bearing that sits on the off-center shaft on the base, and the balls run around on this race. This is sometimes easier with two people, but being a smaller reciprolap, I should be able to manage. Down on the shaft, resting on the balls. It's ground flat. It has a bumper ring to protect your glass from smacking into the iron side. The dimples are there to hold the grit. As your glass moves along, it'll keep grit beneath your glass. I have a block of glass that has been ground, rough ground, just to knock off the high spots. This will go right on the pan with the grit. The only components for grinding here is enough water to cover the bottom. Too much water will splash. And then in this case, I'm using 120 grit silicon carbide. The glass goes on there. Okay, a handy little switch on the cord. You're going to want to make sure that this doesn't get splashed on so it stays dry. I'm going to turn it on so watch the glass. You'll see there's very little splashing. You can see the grit getting into these little cavities, the holes, the dimples, and the weight of the glass will do the grinding. If you need to, you can find a way to put extra weight on the glass. You can see the value of the bumper ring there as it moves around. Keeps it moving on the pan. If you watch one little section on the pan, you'll see it actually slowly turning while it vibrates. It's reciprocating and lapping. Reciprolap. If there are ways of protecting the glass, you can carefully do more than one piece. It's been a little over four hours grinding on with a 120 grit and a bit of water. Piece of glass. Dried off, you can see the difference between the original surface and this surface. This is four and a half hours or a little less, just running on 120 grit. Over time, the 120 grit probably wore down a little bit. So the next step will be 600. Now with the small machine, this, this can be done with one person, uh, even larger pieces if you're big and strong. But this needs to be taken outside and cleaned out. Lift straight up. And Making sure you get all the grit out of the little hole. This is not a place where you want to cut corners. You want to do a good job so you don't have to do it all again. That was better. Now I'm going to add some water. This is 600 grit. And off it goes again. All 
All right, now it's been four and a half hours that this block has been on the 600 grit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it off. Finish looks like. Time to clean this up once again. I'll take the ring off and I will clean that outside. Here's another alternate way to clean it. And this is gonna be most valuable to you if you have a 24, 30, or even a 36 inch reciprolap. With the machine turned on, the idea is keeping the abrasive agitated so it doesn't solidify and clump up. We've got a bucket of clean water here. I'll put in a bit more clear water. Keep rinsing it until water runs perfectly clear. Now oh, off we go again. I have people tell me that typically they, they like to be sure of the cleanliness and they'll do this for about a half an hour. Last step, we presume, and it always is, is, is the final polish step. This is our synthetic felt, magnetic, cut a little bit smaller. We want the glass to go over the edge and not deform the, the felt. A re-cleaned bumper. The glass will, will move around on here, over the edge, bump into this, still safe for the glass. The glass that we're using is um, the next step. It's gone through the 600. The felt will absorb a fair amount of water to begin with. A little bit of cerium oxide. And again, the weight of the glass is gonna do all the polishing. The little holes in the felt will act as a containment just in case any contaminant gets in there. Anything small will fall to the bottom of the hole and will not sit on top and scratch the glass, in theory. I put the splash guard on when I'm doing the cerium polishing because it was splashing all over. This has been polishing for about four and a quarter, maybe four and a half hours. So turn that off. This is my reciprocal lap that I use just for polishing. Uh, you see I've got a lid that keeps the splashing out. You see all the splashing around that happened before I developed my lid. But the lid is simply piece of plexiglass cut into a circle and glued to a rubber ring. I would take that and fit it in there, fill up the extra space with whatever an, another piece of one so it's nice and tight, leave it just a little high. After I have the, the circle cut out, bring it down on top of it and glue it with an adhesive. What's inside turns around. The pan itself is turning. The cerium is always moving around in there. So you can build or develop your splash guards for three, four, whatever fits the degree of your work. <laughs>